Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Marmalade Partner webinar series. I'm Steph Jorgel, Head of Americas for Marmalade, and I'll be your host for this series. The Marmalade Partner webinar series is designed to share thought leadership, trends, and tips around the services and integrations that work with the Marmalade cross-platform game development, SDK, and features partners like Flurry, Fortumo, has offers, Payment Wall, Game House, and others. We'll start off today with 45 minutes of presentation, followed by 15 minutes of Q&A. Feel free to post your questions during the presentation in the lower left part of the screen. We'll address these questions just following the presentation. Today's guest speakers are Ryan Morrell, Senior Director, and Alex Lemontoev, uh, Senior Software Developer Engineer at GameHouse, who will give you an overview of their service and highlight some trends in user acquisition for games. So as, as Steph mentioned, I'm, I'm Ryan Morrell. I'm, I'm responsible for um, the GameHouse promotion network within GameHouse. Um, I'm also responsible for a couple of our additional uh, mobile web and, and desktop web properties, um, the, the marketing and development of those. Um, so who, who is GameHouse? Game, GameHouse has actually been in business for, for 15 plus years and historically heavily focused on um, the PC game distribution space, um, have served uh, upwards of 20 million customers a month, um, you know, generated uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue for, for developer partners um, and, and are mostly now focused on iOS, Android, the mobile market. So uh, we, we currently provide you know, three big services for developers, one of which is um, distribution of PC games, um, second of which is iOS and Android publishing, um, and the third is the Game House Promotion Network, um, which is uh, used for cross-promotion network exchange of, and, and soon uh, paper install and monetization for developers. Um, yeah, so as, as a mobile publisher, mobile publisher, we Game House has been doing it for a long time. Um, <laughs> from back in the day when people developed games for J. Me and Brew, um, we have relationships with uh, global relationships with the top app stores and, and, and carriers where that makes sense. Um, and, and Game House is big. Uh, value add to developers is providing you know the services around game publishing, so localization, monetization, um, analytics, um, and we we provide dedicated account managers, dedicated product managers, et cetera, to ensure um, the games that we're publishing are, are successful in the market, and you know we provide uh, marketing and monetization support, uh, page user acquisition, et cetera. Um, so the Game House Promotion Network, as I mentioned, is a cross-promotion network to drive users. So you can integrate the um, EDK into your Marmalade app. It takes um, about five minutes at this point um, with the improvements that Alex will talk about. Um, and use it to cross-promote your, your own titles, so moving a user from one game to, an, to another. Um, you can use it to share and trade impressions with other developers in the, in the Game House network, of which we're, there are um, over 300 at this point. Um, we support iOS and Android, so Android, obviously, Google Play and Amazon. Um, and we do interstitials and, and video ads. Um, it's up to the developer if they want to use videos or, or um, static images, um, and they can be placed at any natural breakpoint in the game. It's up, it's up to the developer. Um, and <clears throat> it's, it's free, um, as are most most uh, products like this. And we'll be uh, launching monetization uh, for third-party developers next month, which is which is pretty exciting. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll add one more thing here. The, the the big thing that we focused on from the Game House Promotion Network perspective is um, data science and the ability to match users with the appropriate. Um, apps and ads, um, and, and as a result of that, we we have seen upwards of a 30% lift in click-through and install rates, um, which is uh, which is quite good compared to the market. So um, if, if you if you push put that into a monetary um, lens, it, it's highly likely that when we are monetizing, we'll be able to pay more because we've 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 put such a strong focus on the data science and. Um, the algorithmic matching that we're doing on the back end. So that's enough about that. So th these are the three big things that we see for, for max maximizing user acquisition, especially in a world where um, paper install is, is extremely expensive. 
Um, so, so one is app store optimization, um, two is cross promotion and building your own network, and then, and then three is paper and install advertising. And, and there's there's clearly an endless list of things that you can do um, in order to drive users to your to your app to your apps, right? And, and you should try and test as many of them as possible. But these are the three that we find GameHouse as a publisher um, to be the most valuable to us. So app store optimization and, and, and game house we'll talk we don't do this provide this as a service other than for people we're publishing with but um, um, it, it, it's very simply SEO for apps in any app store um, and I, I think probably all of you who are publishing and distributing games or apps right now are, are aware of this so you know 65 percent of, of consumers discover apps via app store search so ranking high for when someone searches for game or puzzle or match three or what have you um, is, is incredibly important and can mean the difference between success and failure in some cases. Um, so what, what are the things that we found um, based on on our own research to be important factors for, for App Store search? So, so title um, is obviously the big one, so 10.3%. Um, rank increase when title contains a keyword. So that takes a lot of work and a lot of research to find the right title to match a keyword. Um, so, you know, if, if your keyword's puzzle, you're probably going to have a hard time uh, competing <laughs> and have a hard time finding a way to put that in the, in the name. Um, so keywords, uh, obviously important. Total number of downloads. Um, your trending download, so what, what your velocity is, and, and your ratings and reviews are, are also very important. Um, there is a whole discussion happening right now on how to promote ratings and reviews and how to actually get users to do them. We recommend following um, the recommendations provided by a company called uh, Apptentive, who, who is also here in Seattle, and you can check out check their site at apptentive.com for for recommendations on the best practices for uh, for driving ratings and reviews. So this is just the why and, and, and the who of um, App Store optimization. So GameHouse specifically has seen our organic installs increase by approximately 20% um, since we started implementing App Store optimization strategies. And, and though that's not, you know, from a percentage perspective, that might not seem like a lot, but it, but it is quite meaningful, especially um, as it creates a little bit of a flywheel effect, right? So if, if you move up in the ranks, um, you get discovered more easily, and then, then your download velocity goes up, and your app store search rank can go up as well. Um, so and the best part about this is um, it's, it's relatively cheap and low lift to go through to do this, uh, through the process of, of optimizing your apps for app store search. Um, and the users that uh, the cohort of users that come from organic discovery tend to be your most valuable um, and most profitable users. So as, as I mentioned, um, GameHouse doesn't actually provide software or tech to do this. Um, we, we do do it on the on behalf of the partners, um, games who we publish. Uh, if, if you're looking for um, people to help you with this, we recommend Mobile Dev HQ. That's because they're also in Seattle like we are and, and, and our friends. but um, there's absolutely viable options from companies like Searchman, AppNeek, um, et cetera. Are there any, any questions so far? Or, no, I guess not. Okay, so the, the second thing, and this plays into a little, <laughs> into a little bit about um, the Game House Promotion Network, is, is we're big fans of, of cross-promotion. So taking your existing audience and moving them from um, <clears throat> one one of your apps to another. So uh, it's, your users are going to most likely at some point leave your app. That is, that is un an unequivocal truth, um, unless you're providing an unlimited amount of content, which is really hard and extremely expensive. So um, we believe that as you learn about what the, what the natural drop-off point is for your consumers, um, whether that be based on number of levels that they play or the amount of time that they spend or how many days they're in your app, whatever that is, that's the point. Right before that is when you should start looking at, at moving them to another one of your apps. Um, so th there's obviously a lot of there, there's some work that goes into doing that. So you know, making sure you have good analytics instrumented to understand understand what those drop off points are, 
um, the right tools in place to actually serve ads to go, to move them into another app um, right before then, et cetera. Um, but it's worth it because because the the value of these users that you have is extremely high. One, you've already acquired them. Two, they already know you. Um, and and three, they're they're substantially more likely to move from one of your apps into another one of your apps than they are. Um, to move into something that they don't know or that from a developer who they aren't familiar with. So um, the, the ideal way is from one of your apps to another. You can also do it by partnering um, and finding third party developers who uh, have similar titles as you and, and trade traffic with them. You can use companies like Sharpers to do that. You can use services like Game Ops Promotion Network to do that. Um, there's a variety of services to do so. Um, <clears throat> it, it, in the end, these are, it, it's these services are all free um, and a, just a fantastic way to move users and, and grow and engage uh, an audience over time across uh, multiple pieces of content. And so GameHouse has um, specifically a long history building franchises and, and one of its most success, successful stemming from its act from the PC business um, is the Delicious Emily's Wonder Wedding series. It's, um, a, a, a time casual time management um, game focused um, focused on on women. Uh, it's been running for about seven or eight years and continues to to be a strong seller for for Game House and um, has, has benefited substantially from from cross promotion. So in December, when uh, Delicious Emily's Honeymoon Cruise was out. Um, Game House made sure that users of Emily's Wonder Wedding and Emily's True Love and, and previous users in the Emily's uh, series were <clears throat> shown ads promoting uh, Emily's Honeymoon Cruise. And we saw click-through rates on those in-app ads of up to 40% and 50% install rate from there. Um, so just by leveraging the existing audience that we'd already built over time, we were able to drive thousands of daily installs um, to push up the charts uh, immediately without having to rely on Apple or Google Google for promotion or spending a bunch of money on um, paper install. So now, it, clearly building a franchise and it takes time and takes effort and, to, and uh, that's a lot of work. Um, but the point is you, when, when you go through the process, <clears throat> at least from our perspective, when you go through the process of developing content and identifying what is what are the right types of content for you to develop, you should be thinking about how can I turn the, this piece of content into a franchise that can be, that I can uh, maximize the value of it over time. Um, and, and there's obviously lots of examples of this, right? So Cut the Rope, uh, Angry Birds, um, so the list goes on and on, right? Um, where once you've created some amount of brand awareness and have users who, who like your brand, take advantage of that. Um, build new ones and then move your old audience into your new game. So along those lines, we also um, are, are big believers in um, kind of non-traditional, and by non-traditional, I essentially mean don't just buy and sell. Um, so to, to build your to, to build your app audience. So you can create a, a flywheel with your own cross-promotion engine, um, as well as app store optimization strategies. Um, but we also heavily believe in doing the work to engage your audience outside of your app via social media. So um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email, these, these are all viable and worthwhile channels to try to engage uh, your existing consumers and also reach new consumers who potentially would be in, in your target audience. So for example, with, with Facebook, it, it's um, relatively trivial to set up a community uh, around your title and then buy likes of that community and you know, for, for as little as five to, to seven cents each. Um, to engage people with your content outside of your app. Um, so Twitter, another good example of how you can engage users and acquire new users, and, and, and all of this is, is, is free or very low cost. Um, we also b believe quite heavily in, in the advantage of the mobile web, um, despite the fact that everyone probably saw the recent report from Flurry that um, m most of people's time in mobile is spent on the web or in apps. That's true, but still a whole lot of it is spent on the mobile web. Um, and according to recent research done, 20% of consumers uh, find apps from mobile web search. So you can create uh, sim really simple websites for, for your games. Uh, we just 
launched one, KiwiWonder.com, for a game that uh, is, is soft launched uh, as of Monday. Um, and, and we recommend everyone do the same. Just a really simple met way for consumers to find it, uh, get more information, uh, and point to a download. And then, of course, you should use analytics to track the performance of all of your channels to identify where you're getting most bang for your buck. Okay. Uh, the last one, and, and paper install advertising. Paper in, install advertising is um, can be extremely valuable when done well, um, but like most things, it requires uh, lots of data to do it well. Um, so we, we recommend, from from our perspective, that developers start small, um, unless they've done a lot of research and have data from previous campaigns. Um, start small with test buys across various networks, get the data, um, understand what works and what doesn't, um, and then scale up or scale down based on the results that they have. Um, the, the, the nice thing about paper install advertising versus other types of kind of traditional advertising is it is paper action and paper results as opposed to a CPC or CPM model, uh, which is kind of the basics of the, of the traditional web advertising model. Um, and as you can see, Facebook estimated that uh, 20 percent advertisers save about 20 percent to, to spend on uh, paper paper install versus CPC or CPM. Next. So there's a lot, you know, the, the simplest way that we look at it is to um, test, uh, set up a test ad, uh, again, across multiple networks or, or one or two if you'd like. Um, you should create simple, um, powerful messages designed for mobile. And by simple, it, it should be, uh, simple. Excuse me. Um, by simple, it should be easily readable, viewable, and consumer, consumable by a consumer in a short period of time. Um, and then you should test, measure, and learn, and do that consistently. So we, we certainly do not recommend doing you know fifty thousand dollar ad buys um, blindly. We would do a thousand dollar ad buy, see what works, um, and then try again. Um, and consistently go up until you're at a point where um, you feel confident. Um, and from, from our perspective, this, and a lot of people's perspective, <laughs> not just ours, um, is the real user acquisition goal is to get your lifetime value above the effective CPI. Because um, obviously you want to make more, more money per user than you spend to acquire them. So as, as you go through the process of um, developing your game and launching your game and marketing your game, um, this is the equation that you always need to have in mind. Um, if the lifetime value of your consumer is um, less than the amount of money you're spending to acquire that consumer, then uh, you should stop spending money um, or um, uh, optimize your game to the point where you are making more money. And just to be clear, effective CPI means um, all of your downloads, not just the downloads that you're paying for. Is there any questions about the service or anything we talked about today? Um, as, as, as Steph mentioned, we have we, we do have an offer um, for, for Marmalade exclusively for Marmalade developers. So if you integrate the Game of Promotion Network um, and, and hit 250 daily ad impressions, you get a three-month Marmalade Indie license extension or a $50 Amazon gift voucher. Um, it's up to you. And free app installs and monetization very shortly. So it's a good deal. Um, to get it, you can, and there's the link right there, uh, go to this site, uh, register, sign up, register your apps, um, upload a few marketing assets, and take the steps that Alex just showed you to integrate the SDK into your game, and you're ready to roll. All right. Well, thank you so much, um, both of you, for joining us and um, for your help with this uh, presentation. And um, we'll talk with you all soon. Great. Thank you. Great, thank you. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.